I want to bring in Paul Rykoff now. He is the founder of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and Righteous Media, where he hosts the podcast, Independent Americans. Paul, appreciate your time tonight. Uh, I want to highlight for folks at home um, a tweet that you, you posted here in the last few hours, because you've been following this as well. Uh, you said, Putin has been hoping and waiting for a moment like this since the war started. Executing these American veterans would be a war crime and a strategic mistake. He'd further motivate the world and America against him and countless more more vets will sign up to join the fight. Paul, do you believe that registers in Putin's calculus? I think it does. You know, I think he's he's really been waiting for a moment like this, understanding that there are thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of Americans who've joined the fight. Many of them are combat veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan. Some of them are in combat roles. Some of them are in training roles. Some of them are in humanitarian roles. I've talked to a number of them on my podcast. I have friends who are there now. And there's been a, a global call to action on the part of President Zelensky to the world. He said, if you want to come join us, fight. This is the good fight. And many Americans who joined the good fight in the past want to join again. They feel like our country is not doing enough and they're putting their money and their lives where their mouth is. So they're joining the fight and we really don't know how many of them there are. So frankly, it, it's pretty fortunate that there hasn't been an American captured sooner. And I think we understand that the propaganda value now for Putin and for the Russians is tremendous. But this is likely, given the sheer numbers of them that are engaged in combat throughout the country, the first of what could be many instances like this. So the White House is going to have to get ahead of it. And the American people have got to wrap their head around the fact that we have sons and daughters that are there. They consider this the fight of our generation in the same way my grandfather did in World War II. And this is likely just another extension of a war that could have gone on for quite a long time, even years. Right. They answered the call. Zelensky put it out there, not just to Americans, but globally. Uh, and these people were brave, but they also know the risks, right? The U.S. State Department said, we don't think Americans should be traveling to Ukraine. Yeah, and, and, and frankly, they, they blew them off. They felt like the American State Department wasn't doing enough, that the Department of Defense isn't doing enough, that President Biden isn't doing enough, and they wanted to do what they can. You know, the, these are brave people who served honorably in our military. Uh, some of them going over there may be cowboys, may be reckless, but a lot of them are very serious people with skills that can help. Uh, combat medics, infantrymen, uh, snipers. Uh, the Ukrainians need their expertise, not just in Ukraine, but also in the border regions, in places like Poland, where you've got a humanitarian disaster. So we have a generation of millions of men and women who've served in Iraq and Afghanistan who want to do good, who want to put those skills to the test. And they're going to do it, frankly, if their government allows it or not. Paul, the big question, and Tom brought this up, if they were in fact captured, uh, will they receive prisoner of war status? Russia has made it pretty clear uh, how they feel about those they consider mercenaries in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, the Russians say they're going to kill them. And, and if they do, that will be a war crime. That will escalate this to a whole new level. It may drag NATO in further. I don't expect American uh, forces to put troops on the ground, but this will drag us further into what I think is really become a proxy war with Russia. I think if you don't think that we're in, in, in cyber war with Russia, if we're in strategic and economic war with Russia, then you're deluding yourself. So this may be another attempt for Putin to drag us further in and to drag other interests in and to drag this out. He understands the politics of America. He thinks that we will be weak. We will stop sending them uh, support. We'll stop sending them money and arms. And we've seen 11 senators voted against the last Ukraine war package. And I think Putin's counting on that number to go up as Americans get tired of this and get distracted by other things like school shootings here in the U.S., the January 6 hearings and whatever else is in the headlines daily here at home. Yeah, the focus has shifted. Well, you brought this up, um, pulling the U.S. deeper into this conflict. Ned Price with the State Department said if the U.S. had credible reason to believe these men were in Russian custody, they would be reaching out to Russia if they felt it would be productive. So what do you think he's not saying about the U.S. government's involvement in this? Well, I think they know a lot more than they're going to share, which is frankly as it should be. They shouldn't disclose operational uh, issues for, for operational security reasons. Uh, they're going to keep things close to their vest. But I think we, we've been a little naive about Putin here. I mean, he's consistently shown us that he will do the worst possible thing. He's not going to honor our code. He's not going to honor the Geneva Convention. He's not going to honor the global construct. So we should expect and predict and prepare for him to do the worst. He could trot these guys out in Moscow and execute them in public. And we have to have 
the, the awareness that that is a possibility. We're not dealing with an actor here who is abiding by our rules. So America's got to understand that, prepare for it, and prepare for what could be a very long and bloody period, not just for Americans, but especially for Ukrainians in the East, where this artillery war continues to extend, which is really the most brutal kind of combat we've seen in the West since World War II. This is not like anything we've seen. So my message to Americans is, you know, stay focused, stay vigilant, but stay prepared, because this could go on and be much worse than even our government is preparing us for. Oh, no, we've got a lot more ahead of us, Paul. Um, in fact, many people believe this will be a war of attrition now as we approach about four months since the war started. Yeah, I mean, look, we were in Afghanistan for 20 years, and nobody in the beginning said we were going to be there for long. But I think that, that we should prepare for that. This could literally go on for decades. The eastern region, the Donbass region that's contested by the Russians and Ukrainians has been contested for a long time and could be contested for some time to come. The question is, will it spill over? Will it spill over into places like Moldova? Will the refugee pro uh, problem continue? Will, will, will bombs cross lines? Now that we've got long-range missiles and artilleries, it's not necessarily intentional. It could be a mistake, uh, a, a problem that goes across a line or hits someone else's ship that engages uh, many more forces than we had anticipated. So brace yourself, America. This is not going away fast. And Putin's counting on it. He wants to drag this out and he wants us to quit. Wow. All right, Paul Rykoff, we appreciate your perspective tonight. Thank you for coming on. And for folks at home, we will continue to follow this story very closely of these two missing veterans uh, right now in Ukraine, Alex and Andy. Uh, their families calling on the White House now to do anything to find them and bring them home safely. We're all Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.